Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 171 of Snack Minute. Um, this week, we have our old friend Hank back. Uh, he's here to talk to us about what's on all of our minds, which is AI, um, and specifically uh, a bot that he, that he built. So, Hank, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself for our new Snackers, and then we'll jump right into it. Yeah, absolutely. So Hank Preston, I'm a principal engineer here at Cisco, and I work in our learning and certifications uh, area. And I've uh, I've been a I don't know how many times I've I've joined you uh, you and Kareem here, Matt, on Snack Minute. Six or seven at least, Hank. It's it's been a handful, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to look back, maybe ten. Yeah, we're getting up there, but it's fun, right? Definitely in competition with Quinn. Always great to have you here, Hank. <laughs> awesome, yeah, and I'm glad to be back, man. Um, so tell us about this uh, CCNA mentor that you that you started with. I, I you know I just got a ping right before we started recording that we're we're talking about some AI. I'm intrigued to see how you've been working with it. Kareem and I have been working with it for um, you know maybe around the last year or so now, just trying to figure stuff out. So um, if you wouldn't mind introducing us to the end result, and then we'll dig into the details. Yeah, absolutely. So I like I think everybody out there is uh, am trying to figure out kind of what AI is, what it isn't, how it might fit into our day jobs. Um, and I'm a, a an engineer at heart, so I kind of dove in and said, okay, I want to explore AI with a use case that I saw some relevance towards, and that was kind of the initial thought process behind building a CCNA mentor or uh, any kind of an educational mentor, something that could help somebody in their learning exercise, study material, get prepped for an exam that's in the space. So I use that concept as a way to dive in and kind of just explore a bunch of different topics and ideas around AI, generative AI, how can you can use it to integrate with other systems? What what are some of the pieces that are there? So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll kind of look at what I've got and then we can kind of tear it apart a little bit. And so I set up this this new chat window here with the two of you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and set, send a message here off to CCNA Mentor and say, hey there. Why might I want to earn my CCNA? Right. So maybe we're just getting started. Someone said, hey, you should go ahead and look into this. It's useful. Let's see what the CCNA mentor has to say about the value of CCNA. So while this is running, Hank, it's thinking in the background. Oh, never mind. It, that was fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, it came back. It's pretty good. It's like any of the 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 AI tools in Gen AI, right? It, it takes your input, it processes it, and then eventually spits out an answer. So why? what what are the benefits? Career opportunities, skill validation, foundation for advanced, right? Move your way up to CCIE. Big fan of that. So Give some nice areas in the space. And so what are some of the other things we might need to kind of dive into? Hey, I uh, am working on studying at CCNA Mentor. We got to make sure he's paying attention. Uh, at CCNA, I'm working on studying Spanning Tree and confused about the difference between root bridge and designated bridge. Can you help me uh, clarify? All right. So the idea here is the, the goal when I wrote this was not to replace actual kind of real life instructors, right? I love teaching people technology. I think there's a huge value with kind of that human interaction side there. But I think we can all agree there's just never enough instructors for every person that's there. And even if you have an instructor, you might be studying at 3 a.m. and your instructor is sleeping and, and is as is, is kind as every instructor that we have at Cisco is that kind of teaches CCNA. Right. I know my wife would get really mad if my phone rang at 3 a.m. because some one of my students wanted to had a question about spanning <laughs> tree. And so with tools like this, kind of my one of my use cases was kind of to bolster, add kind of features that are there. So here I'm 3 a.m. I'm confused about root bridges and designated bridges. I get some answers. The root bridge is the central reference point. Designated bridges are on segments. Super helpful. I say, OK, that helps. Can you help me study some questions from the exam? Maybe multiple choice. All right. So maybe I'm prepping. I'm going through. I'm, I'm I got my exam tomorrow. I'm cramming. I want to make sure I'm ready. And so I got to ask CCNA mentor. I forgot. Ask CCNA mentor. And then I will use the, <laughs> the lovely copy paste feature here. All right. So at CCNA mentor, can you help me study some questions for the exam? Maybe multiple choice. And so then we see this next feature that goes in one of my favorites to say, oh, OK, let's dive in. 
I'm great. I love writing questions. This is Hank, not like Hank the student, but actual Hank. I love writing questions on technology, but even I can eventually kind of run out of creativity. Man, the AI tools are fantastic at a use case like this. So what's the primary function they of really the root bridge in Spanish? Yeah, well, so we've got to forward now. frame. <laughs> yeah, prevent loops, determine the best path to serve as a reference point. So I, what do you think the right answer is there, Matt? I, I did some quick reading while you were talking, Hank, and and I think it's I think it's D. All right, Cream, right? Put you on the spot here. What do you think the right answer is? I think it's D as well. All right, I also think it's D, but let's pretend we didn't know, and we're gonna say let's say it's C. Boy, Hank, Hank, Hank made me worried that I <laughs> I was gonna look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did a similar demonstration. Actually, Ooh, I got to tell CCA mentor at ah, CCA mentor. I'm used to talking to it one on one, not in this group room where you guys can see as well um, at CCA mentor C. Um, I did this demonstration at Cisco Live in Amsterdam and I actually answered a question wrong, not on purpose to be wrong, but because I just skimmed through it so fast and it was kind of a nice teachable moment. And so what, what I what we like here is it's like, OK, not quite. Here's the D and then gives you the reinforcing information like a good tutor or mentor was. And what's really nice about this is that I could keep going, right? I could go through until I felt really confident about spanning tree and then jump into questions about another topic. And so that kind of gives the, the first use case I had was this type of knowledge validation, generation, question answering that goes through. And one of the things I really wanted to do with CCNA Mentor was to keep it conversational, make it feel like you're having a conversation, not just like a search engine or I, I ask a Gen A tool for an answer, and then it doesn't remember what we talked about. Like, I really like the conversational aspect of this. So that, that was kind of the first kind of feature and use case that went in. What do you guys think? This um, is great, Hank. I think, yeah, I think as a sidekick for anybody that's uh, attempting their CCNA is having that and, you know, not calling the, their instructor at three o'clock in the morning is, is very useful. I am interested in knowing a little bit more on the AI side, how did you implement mm -hmm. this? What went into it? I know, uh, Matt, I, you were trying to chime in on, on your opinion of this. So before I ask, before you answer the question, maybe, Matt. Oh, no, I was sure. actually going to say the same thing, Kareem, because, you know, because I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to learn how this works and what it is and what it isn't. And so, you know, the conversational aspect to me, I'm really interested to see how you did that because, We've all kind of built bots in the past and we know that they usually follow some kind of logical flow. But mm -hmm. with the advent of LLMs and how they interact with how we interact with them, we don't need to necessarily worry about as much of that. But if you are going down the same path of conversation, that has to be an input into the implementation that you built. So I'm actually really intrigued to hear about the LLM that you put in, how you were or um importing content to to update the LLM to answer these things appropriately. And then um, actually, I'm really intrigued about how you built in the logic um, for what I would call an agent in this situation. But, um, you know, kind of curious to the architecture behind it. Do, do, do you guys remember you, you guys remember when we were building bots back in like 2017, 2016, mm -hmm. and we had to like import an NLP library? to handle the, the language <laughs> processing before we can apply the logic mm -hmm. and a bunch of if and else statements in your script oh, yeah. to handle. I mean, this is, this is like 10 times better and easier. Well, we think that's why we're asking Hank the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's always, it's you, peeking behind the curtains, always fun. So as you mentioned, we've been writing bots. And I, I mean, I got into the bot train very early when we were all, the three of us were in DevNet kind of doing different pieces. Yeah. One of my most uh, kind of popular DevNet sessions I always did was building the uh, Chuck Norris joke telling WebEx bots to go through. And so kind of it was a nice evolution for me to see what's possible with these new large language models, these LLMs that go in. Um, so from a fundamental perspective, I actually started from that, that foundation I have. The actual bot code I, I'm using here is based on the same um, WebEx Teams bot Python library I built, I think, eight years ago at this point. So I started with that as the foundation for how to actually wrap all of the the WebEx integrations here, the web hooks, the the processing of the, the information and the back and forth. And then what I did is I just went through and said, okay, rather than using the typical kind of command structure, my, my library was always like, you look for like slash and then a command and it would do something. Rather than that, I just said, okay, well, whatever comes in, we're just gonna take that and kind of send it off to the LLM for processing because that's the value is you don't have to be super command structured. 
Now, I actually want to hit on this, but while we were chatting here, Matt, you asked a question to CCNA. Hey, CCNA, can you explain BGP to me? And it kind of hits on part of back to this question is one of the things when I built it is I didn't want to create a general purpose chat mm-hmm. bot based on AI, right? There's a thousand of those and, and they're all way better than anything I was going to build. I wanted something that was kind of very specific at the CCNA level. And so CCNA Mentor comes back and I told it to be polite, right? It says, hey, I'm here to help you with CCNA <laughs> studies, BGPs outside the CCNA blueprint topics. And so how, how do you have to do that? Well, the LLM I, I'm using here is, is um, it's, a, it's one of the Cisco internal, we refer to it as Bridge IT, but it's based on top of OpenAI's kind of chat GPT AI models. I think we're on the 4.0 version at this point. Okay. And so my foundation model is that. And so if I if you just ask a 4.0 model, can you explain BGP to me? Yeah, it'll give you a great answer. And so the first thing I had to do is to build kind of a persona that gets injected every time someone talks to CCNA mentor that says, no, this is who you are. You are a CCNA instructor. You're going to focus the answers on this topic. If someone asks something related to networking, you can probably dive a little bit beyond the blueprint, but try to keep things focused on CCNA. And so that's that's a lot of how this goes through is I built on everything I knew about kind of chatbot creation. And then I really focused in on what does it take to take a, a foundational AI LLM, no matter what it is, and then get it focused with whatever your use case is. Because the last thing I wanted was someone opening up CCA Mentor and then starting asking other questions because I'm sure anybody that's looked at AI, right? There's a cost to AI. You want to make sure that you're using it specific. And I didn't want this to like leak off into being somebody's new, like, um, I don't know, a Taylor Swift lyric generation, uh, like mimicking tool or whatever else it was going to become. Uh, Those are great use cases for AI, but I didn't want my CCNA mentor doing that. I wanted it focused in this space. So that was a big part of the use case was kind of keeping it focused some of the earlier um, versions I created, uh, it was great at that. It was just kind of rude about it. So kind of gauging it appropriately. <laughs> oh, so now Matt's going to ask for the actual Taylor Swift. <laughs> and we expect the same answer. <laughs> if you did ask CCNA, hey, could you write a song in this style of Taylor Swift for me about spanning tree? You might get different answers that are in there because there's there's legitimate reasons to kind of add music and poetry and these things into these topics. And so it's just you got to you got to gauge the things inappropriately. So if you really want like the the shake it off version about spanning tree, you could probably <laughs> get CCNA Mentor to help you there. So to my understanding, Hank, it's you, you use the um, the core LLM, uh, which is based on chat GPT provided by uh, Cisco IT, which has, you know, all security mm-hmm. and it, it's it's pretty well secured from from, you know, sharing external information. Um, or sharing internal information externally, I should say, and um, then you've had you've added some prompt engineering mm-hmm. to that to kind of have a guide rail, a guardrail around the LLM itself or the answers from the bot itself. And then, did you have to like rag it as well and add some like the blueprint, or does it already know the CCNA blueprint? Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm I'm enjoying watching Matt trying to actually get the Taylor Swift. <laughs> Very um, distracting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to go through. So, so your question on this one, Cream, is really good. So I started with the base knowledge that ChatGPT had, and it knows. I mean, ChatGPT, most of these LLMs, doesn't just that one, whether it's Gemini or or the Copilot from Microsoft or Llama or any of these ones. Like they're they they've consumed so much from the internet that that fundamentally right. it knew a lot about what it takes to be CCNA. Um, but it was, it's all date stamped. So one of the first things I had to do was to actually update it and tell it what the current CCNA blueprint was, because the date, the data that was in the model was, was the previous version. There wasn't a lot of changes, but it was the old. Uh And so I needed to make sure the right version. And there were a few other things I wanted to tweak. Now, when I got started, right, I was very, very early in my AI exploration. And so I didn't know the details. I knew what RAG existed, right? Being able to kind of jam extra data in and, and kind of adjust what was answered. But that was wasn't ready to dive in. And so all I did was I took all, I've taken all of the information that I wanted to make sure that the the bot knew the correct mistakes, things like that. And I just included in the context at the setup of the bot. And so the first thing when you, you engage a new conversation is like the, the conversation is initialized and there's what's referred to as kind of the system prompt that basically sets the persona and the guardrails for the chat bot. So in that system prompt context, 
I've provided uh, a significant amount of detail that says, okay, this is what I, who you are. Uh, here's some information that is, we want to make sure we're accurate about, and that's all included in the context. And then out on top of that, it's whatever the open data models are. Now, since I've started, I've continued my AI journey and I'm actually diving into kind of RAG, re retrieval augmented generation, which where I can actually say, okay, I want to, I want to gauge and use kind of a curated selection of resources to provide info about CCNA. And so that's the kind of one of the next things I want to dive into is how can I adjust and hone in the data to not just every post that's ever been on Reddit or Discord or any of these other areas about CCNA. I want to focus it in on, on content that we know is good, validated, vetted, uh, maybe tied back to some of the, the content we have on Cisco U in these different areas to say, no, this is how we want to gauge and teach people to go through. So that's kind of the next thing I want to dive into is that that RAG aspect of it. But so far, it's really just built on top of the the, the base LLMs plus some kind of structured context that kind of sets the guardrails, fixes mistakes that I found kind of in the public data on that that range. So yeah, that's yeah, that's really uh, interesting. And it's interesting that you were able to build this. I mean, that actually gives me a little bit more trust, um, I guess, mm -hmm. in the, the LLMs themselves a little bit. I've always been approaching it from the you know, there's always a nuance to information and, and data, especially in, I, I would argue, in our world, though there are millions of network engineers and there's a, millions of people that go through CCNA, it still um, is relatively niche in the, in the grand scheme of things. And so yeah. I do take for granted the fact that as we're implementing these things that we that I almost assume you would have had to have ha had other sources of data and had built out the vector database for this that you were able to put um, content from Cisco U and learning and certifications into that to, to help you out with it. But it's really interesting to me that you haven't had to do that yet. Right. And and so that kind of dovetails into where this might go in the future. So I built this initially as a prototype to see what was possible, learning exercise for myself. But as we've gotten feedback and I've done kind of demonstrations like the one we're doing here, there, there's a really kind of good use case, an actual solution that's here. But we would want to have this on top of kind of good vetted content. And so that's one of the things we're doing inside of kind of learning and certifications and Cisco U is figuring out how this might turn into a future product that's available for anybody to take advantage of as part of their own studies and interactions with Cisco. So if you're out there wondering, hey, can I talk to CCNA Mentor right now? Um, it's not fully released. It's it's very much kind of in a prototype demonstration with, with guardrails on who can talk to it right now. But we are investigating how this might look in the future. Hank, I'm really sorry to shut this down. I think Kareem and I are, are wrapped with attention as our snackers, but <laughs> we are going to have to call it. Um, thank you so much for showing this. Uh, thank you so much for digging into the architecture and everything that how you were thinking about it is really a great way for us to start to think about how we can use these kinds of tools and platforms for the kind of work we do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Hank, this is this is amazing. Um, we'll definitely have to have you back. Thank you for your time and snackers. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for our next one. Yeah, thank you guys both for having me back and uh, stay tuned, right? We're hoping to take some of these ideas and bring them into the actual products, not just Cisco U side, but I'm also working with the CML team for some of these enhancements as well. So stay tuned. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right.